All right, so y'all asked for it, the Raspberry Pi 5. Can I get just like a little tiny 128 gigabyte image? And I like that too, you know, it's a nice size and it is flexing the capabilities of the Pi 5 as well, as you see here with some GameCube games. It also has some PlayStation 2 games. So even if you're just looking for a Pi and you want to test the limits of it or play one of your favorite games and you're spending that little extra money getting the Pi 5 over the Pi 4, there's a great image to either start with or just give you like a little bit of everything. So this is called the... Funk to see foreplay, Funk to see foreplay by Pi Funk. Uh, it's 128 gigabyte image, but the download's l like 89 gigabytes, so it's a small download. So I think those of you just looking to like, have a little image on the side um, with you know more the more popular games, you know this is going to be your you know kids who were grow grew up uh, people born in the 80s, I'd say you know early 90s. This is going to be for you. Um, or if you like to go back in that time or go forward in time, you know, this could be for you. But uh, Sega Saturn, Super Nintendo, 3DO, nice arcade set, Dreamcast, GameCube, NES, N64, Naomi, uh, you know, Dreamcast, and then some TurboGrafx-16, PC Engine, CD, um, and some PS1, PS2. So that's what we're going to get into today. Um, it's only 1,900 games, so it's kind of like the best of the best. But like I said, I think some people interested in this might just want a pre-set up um, Raspberry Pi uh, image just ready to go. So let's go ahead and check it out. All right, so on first boot, you have all my games. You can click in here and you can go through all the games. And next to the games in, in brackets, you can see what game it actually is. And uh, this is emulation stage. So you can hit select on your controller and go to a certain letter if you want to find something. Um, I also want to go over to options here really quick. Um, a couple cool things. It does come with background music pre-installed. You can see they have like their own background music A and B side. But they also have some like funky music, like some Prince, some uh, Super Freak, Superstition, you know, all that stuff. Um, they uh, have controller tools, you know, checking out your different controllers. They have the Sin and Light Gun uh, drivers there. Emulation tools, okay, nothing really there. Retro Pi tools, so anything you might need for, for that. And then it looks like overclock optimization does have that script as well. Visual tools, Hursty themes, all kinds of stuff to kind of edit it, make it your own. Speaking of themes, you can hit start on your controller, go to UI settings, go to theme set. We're running Epic New R Plus, but it comes with Slick Tech, Supreme, and Carbon. Uh, that, that'll change the look of how this all looks. And then uh, fix my build, system info, and RetroPie setup. Um, so before we get into the games, I just want to share with you that they have each game. Uh, they also have Cody. If you want to, you know, do some streaming, turn this into a media center or something like that, it's all set up for you. Uh, they have a couple power scripts installed for you, but you can even just hit your controller and press quit this way, or you can hit the power to turn on and off your Raspberry Pi. And then, uh, we did options. There's one other area. Was it in options? Yeah. There's one other area in options. I didn't show you yet. That was pretty cool, which is the... Ah, yes, the FE switcheroo, which actually lets you try different front ends and load different things. It also had, um, I want to say that there was also, where was I, where you can change it to um, whether you want to use this uh, different uh, for, as web browser if you want to do some streaming. Because now you can, oh, it's in ports. Okay. You have Chromium, you have Cloud Gaming, you have Firefox, and you have Plasma Desktop. So, Remember, the Pi 5 is a little bit more powerful. So if you want to do some, uh, you know, YouTube or, you know, any other kind of streaming or, I don't know, there's other websites that people use, uh, you can, those are available to you. Okay, so let's get into the games. Um, so we're in S. Okay, all my games, you got 1901. First one up is 3DO. You only have 14 games. The other thing you'll notice is a very clean image, just a little artwork, nothing crazy. Road Rash, great game. Play that game. Um and uh, no video snap. So there's like video preview going on here. But you can see all the information here, like in the bottom right corner. And then it, it, it will scroll through the descriptions and things. But uh, it looks, you know, as I went through this image, 711 arcade games. So I'm just going to hit my uh, trigger on my controller so you can see which arcade games are included. So 700 isn't a ton, but uh, just looking through here, you can see there's not a lot of duplicates. You know, a lot of other people who make uh, these types of images do uh, duplicates or different regions and so it looks like there's just one nice set here which is cool they do got G.I. Joe on there really fun game right there you got the Galagas um, 
and uh, Gunbird. So really, really nice looking um, set of arcade games. And um, Killer Instinct 1 and 2, oh, I'm going to have to play that later. It should run on the Raspberry Pi 5 now. Remember, Raspberry Pi 4 couldn't quite get those 3D games working. You even got Mortal Kombat 4 on here, the arcade game. Nice. Um, so that's something I like about this image is it really is stretching the limits of the Pi 5, as I mentioned earlier, um, with GameCube and PlayStation 2, and then these 3D arcade games. That really wasn't an option with the Raspberry Pi 4, even with overclocking. It just wasn't powerful enough. And so here we are. We now have a system that can handle that, and uh, I'm loving it. Uh, I already played quite a bit of gameplay, and um, I can tell you that it runs great. Uh, it seems like the games that he put on here, PyFunk, all uh, run fairly well. Now, not all the games are going to run really well, right? Remember, some PlayStation 2 games are going to be harder to emulate than others, and so the performance might change, um, you know, depending. So there you go, 711 arcade games. All right, so Sega Dreamcast, 40 games. We'll just go down here really quick. Looks like there's also... Uh, because Dolphin Blue, I just saw Dolphin Blue, so there's some Naomi, some uh, a Thomas Wave as well, or maybe that's just the Dreamcast version. I'll check that out later. Uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Now, all these games are playable on the Raspberry Pi 5, but it's a nice little set there. Ten games. So I played Mario Party, and I also played uh, The Simpsons Road Rage, and both played really well. Uh, as you can see here, not the best. You know, There's a lot more GameCube games, but um, you know, here we are. So this is NES Hacks. Now, do they have regular NES? Yeah, so they have regular NES if you just want Nintendo. And it looks like it's the best of the best because there's like over 700 games for the Nintendo. But uh, this is like a good mix. So let's go back to NES hacks. So these are like uh, fan-made games, things like that. Um, you know, the cool thing about these games is some of these games were, were, re were made recently. You know, some people are still making little games and uh, homebrews for these games. So... Pretty cool to see that, and uh, looks like they're, um, as far as nudity, I haven't gone through everything, but uh, do note that the name of this build is the, you know, uh, whatever it was, but I, if, you know, when you load up the, the system, you uh, see a woman in a doorway. Now, she's not nude, but, um, you know, it's uh, definitely not for kids. All right, uh, Sega Genesis hacks. So 66 Sega Genesis hacks, but if you go to regular Sega Genesis like I just did, I fast, I went through a couple extra to get there. You could see that it's, again, you know, Sega Genesis had like 700 games for it, but it's just giving you a little mix on the Sega Genesis. And with Sega Genesis and like NES, it's so easy to find these games online and you can easily add them on there. No problem whatsoever. But here's those homebrew games now. Blades of Steel 2. Blades of Steel 1 was great. I haven't tried 2 yet. <sighs> okay, so you could see this. Um, the reason why I was saying with the homebrews, if you were to find any kind of mature content, I'm sure they'd probably be in here. So if that's what you're looking for, I would go in there. If not, I would stay away. SNES hacks and or SNES. But, and then what about regular SNES games? Oh, oh, there you go. So regular SNES 105. These are your non-homebrews. I know I'm jumping around right now, but I just feel like I should do all the SNES at once so you could see what's included. And SNES, one of my favorite systems, um, 100 games is not enough. But um, you know, here we are. Um, 40 homebrews on that complete Kong collection. I remember there was quite a bit of Donkey Kong, Fall Guys World. Um, so you got a couple, uh, 2K22. Wow, that's recent. All right, and then Super Boss Gaiden. So some fun little games there. Super SpongeBob Cart, Unholy Night. Now we already did Genesis N64. I played uh, Mario Kart earlier. And uh, nice little N64 collection. That's kind of the best games. And uh, have that Golden Eye. You have the Zeldas. You got the Marios. You got Tony Hawk. You got the wrestling games. Naomi. Let's start at the top here. 
Chaos Field, Guilt Gear, Melty Blood, Sega Tetris, uh, Tetris Japan, and Zero Gunner 2 and Zombie Revenge. All right, Naomi 2, only 10 games here. You do got Initial D on here. Nice, but it's actually not even 10 games. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. These two are not games. Okay. Neo Geo 141. So you got all the Neo Geos. It's not a big system. So all your Metal Slug is going to all be in there. Don't worry. So all the Neo Geos. We already did NES, PC Engine, CD-ROM. Only t only 10. That's your 10 there. Turbo Havoc 16. What did it say? 97. So quite a bit more here. I'll go ahead and go through them. Just because there's not that many games on this actual, on the whole build. And I was just saying earlier, like with NES and um, ports, we went through those earlier. Power, this power script. All right, PlayStation 2. So I only played Crash Bandicoot, didn't have any lag. You know, I'm looking at all these games. They're not that hard to emulate. The If you do, the controls for the PlayStation emulator are right here. So if you have any issues with the controls, open this up. You can like change the graphic settings if it's lagging or not. So this could be fun to tinker with if that's what you're into. Um, you can mess with the controls, the graphics, the uh, frames, all that kind of stuff um, in here. Um, and then you can add your own games from here as well. So those of you coming from the Raspberry Pi 4 and you want the 5, this might be a good image to just play around with. It's not that big and you can add your own stuff on top of it. PlayStation 1, 28 games. So we'll go through those really quick. Not that many. But what I was just saying with NES and SNES is you can, uh, Sega Saturn, is you can um, add those games so easily. They're all over the place. They're easy to drag and drop. And as you see, I'm going through all, so far I haven't seen a single game that didn't have the artwork or metadata description. So it's a pretty complete image. Uh, you know, uh, he's not doing the entire collection, which saves you a lot of time. But it also saves you a ton of space. And then we did SNES already, and then we're back at all games. So there you have it. Um, pretty easy to use. You can hit start on your controller anytime. You can change the sound settings. We talked about um, the graphic, you know, the the themes, uh, game collection settings. You can make your own game collections and organize this differently if you want. Um, there's some other settings in here. You can show your frame rate. Uh, you can change your controls and add new controllers, and then you can quit out of here. Um, and then anytime you can hit select, that pauses the screen, I guess, there. But if you're in here, you can hit select. You can jump to a certain game or edit the metadata on a game. Uh, you can favorite a game. Let's see what favorite is. All right. So if you hit Y on your controller, it favors. So I'll add Yay and Ultraverse Prime. And I added WWF. And then let's go back. And then do they have favorites? Does it, will auto-populate favorites? I don't think it does. I think you got to add it yourself. So then you'd actually have to hit Start, UI Settings, uh no game collection settings it's here okay you can also add last played if you want to see the last game you played and then you go back back and it should there so my last played games there you go some of the games i was playing in this video and then uh my favorites the ones we just added for sega cd so you can always do that add your favorite games so like i'm like oh i like that and i like tetris 2 and i like super star wars and super mario world mario kart and all stars and then it'll be in your favorites all ready to go so you can just click and load up the game and look at that you do have uh loading screens as well and uh all right so there you have it pi funk 128 gigabyte image. I got this one from Arcade Punks. I'll put a link to their website and um, you can torrent it. There's a couple ways you can get it. All you gotta do is you download it, you extract it with WinRAR or, or, or 7-zip, and then you're given a uh, an image file. Image files, you just write it to an SD card. So you can put it on a 128 gigabyte SD card. That's what I did in this video, a Samsung 128. But you can even put it on a 256 gigabyte or 200 gigabyte, a little bit bigger, and then you can expand it, and then it'll give you that extra empty space to add some additional games if you'd like. But one of the nice things about 128 is twofold. One, 128 gigabyte SD cards are cheaper than you know the next size up, and then also it's less download. A lot of people don't have the bandwidth or the speed, 
and so the smaller the download, the easier it is for you. So I think that's why a lot of people are going to be liking this one. There's not a ton of Pi 5 images out yet, and this one seems to be available to everybody, and uh, it has a lot going for it, especially the GameCube and the PlayStation 2. Those are all installed, ready to go, so it might be a good jumping board for some people, and I think they're going to really enjoy that. So when I did Wolf of Nose 512 gigabyte, which is an awesome image, and I highly recommend it, it is 512 gigabytes. So a lot of people are like, is there any 128s out there? And uh, I agree, 128's a nice little sweet spot, or even 256. Um, 512s were on sale the other day for like $28, though, so it's in the U.S. at least. But anyways, um, you know, people were requesting a smaller image, and I was like, I should probably go check some out to see what's out there. And so that's what came about with this video. And so all that said and done, I'm going to give this one an A. I really like it. Obviously, it's not going to be a comprehensive, all the games, complete ROM sets with video snaps. You know, it doesn't have that going for it. Um, but it never claimed to do that. It didn't go out to do that. So as far as its intention as an image, kind of giving you the best of the best all in one, um, you know, it does exactly that. If you are looking for bigger collections and more games, you know, I highly recommend the Wolf of Nose image. Um, I have a couple other more ima other, other images I'm checking out, and so I'll be releasing a couple videos soon. But, um, you know, this Raspberry Pi 5, pretty sweet. And especially as the supply chain gets better and these become cheaper, um, it's a lot of fun and a cool little device. And, uh, you know, I do like, as I mentioned earlier, the Raspberry Pi enables me to stream YouTube videos definitely more powerful it can, it can it can replace a really small mini pc that being said i also hear you out there saying oh ryzen's are way better mini pcs are not much more there's so much better. i agree you know there there's a lot of options <laughs> we're spoiled with options but um the pi 5 you know holds a special place in my heart but for sure they're no longer the cheapest best bang for your dollar that they once were but uh, anyways, uh, that's what I think. Let me know what you all think. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.